This is Spectra. It is a additive synthesizer released by the Symtec Sound. It was released back in 2018. And it is basically it's an additive synthesizer made for reason. And it can be used in both standalone and in the racks. So regardless of what version of reason you're using, you can download this synthesizer for free. And one of the little known facts about this synthesizer is that in a lot of ways, it takes a lot of its inspiration from the K5000 from Kawai. So if you're a synth head and you know about the Kawai K5000, this synthesizer takes a lot of cues from that piece of hardware. And that was one of the fun facts <clears throat> about this rack extension that I learned when I had started uh, emailing the developer and asking a couple of questions about this device. So yeah, if you're into that, this may borrow some cues from that and in some ways may even be reminiscent of that synthesizer. So yeah, what I want to do in this video is give a basic overview of this synthesizer in general and show some ways that you can use it beyond just the presets. I am by no means an expert in synthesis or let alone additive synthesis or this particular approach to additive synthesis, but I wanted to show a streamlined approach so that if you're someone that's new to sound design and you want to get into learning how to program a synthesizer like this, you know, you can, you can get your feet wet and then over time you can learn how to, you know, really program your own stuff and get more life out of the synthesizers that you have. Because a lot of times <clears throat> when it comes to, when it comes to sounds, a lot of times it's not so much the synthesizer itself that you like. That is a big part of it, depending on what you get. But a lot of times it's also based on the person or the people who program that synthesizer. Like a lot of times I'm going to repeat myself. A lot of times it's based on who's programming it. I hear a lot of people, you know, sometimes they'll be like, yeah, man, I like this core Triton because it has this sound, or I like this Roland because it has this sound. And yeah, the Roland and the Triton are very powerful, but a lot of times it's because of the people who are involved in taking those sounds and, and formatting them in such a way that made them sound good. And once you understand that process, you're good to go. So, We'll, we'll do the general layout. This synthesizer has two LFOs. It has two tone generators up front and it has two filters. And then here you have your spectrum modulators. Down here you have your mod matrix. And then you have some, some things that help determine like the range of the pitch wheel and the mod wheel. This synth has up to 12 voices and it can be in polyphonic mode or monophonic or legato. <clears throat> and so for the purpose of this video, again, I'm just going to play with the one generator and show you some of the basics. So as you can see here, if we click on the different waveforms, there are a lot of different tones to choose from. Everything from your standard sawtooth square base triangle and sine waveforms to things like spectrum and symmetric and arpic and vox FM piano to name a few. Of course, you have your ability to adjust the pitch, either coarse tuning or fine tuning. You can adjust the levels, you can pan 
the generator to the left or to the right. You have your ring depth. I'm going to leave this alone for right now. And then you have your spectrum modulators. And how I try to remember this, or I try to think of it in a way that's similar to Parsec. Anybody who's used Parsec, you know, likewise, you have your different waveforms that you can pick and choose from. And then you have your modifiers. In the case of Parsec, you have modifiers, you know, one and two. Pick the different ones. change that generator and you hear the the differences in the harmonic and likewise and again that how the synthesizer is going to sound it is going to be based on how you run those oscillators or tone generators through those modifiers. Here is the same way, or the same idea. The approach is a little bit different. You have target one and two that deals with the morphing aspects. On this side, you have multi harmonics and single harmonics. Then here you have more harmonics, envelope, accent. These two right here deal with tuning and unison. And here is the selector for each of those different ones. And I'll show you. So we'll start with target one. I'll click on it. And it's going to go through the different waves that you can choose. I'm going to choose sci-fi. I'm going to go to target two. that sound just a little bit or drop that target and then we have multi click on that all odd Kind of like pulling a draw bar off an of organ. Sorry, I'm holding that note down for entirely too long. I gotta remember that I am shooting a video. Let's go to accent. I think I'm going to change target to. Let's go back. All right. 
let's see, what do I want to do next? Let's go to the tuning. I have to click on it. I always got to remember if you want to adjust the parameters, you have to click on the little dots. I'm going to turn this on. And make a brighter sound. Back in the envelope, H envelope one, part two. So if you're messing with this or you're adjusting this and you go and you set the envelope to modify either H envelope one or H envelope two, that means you will, you will be here. And it's going to go through different parts of the harmonics. You have edit. Nope, I'm not going to mess with that. <laughs> not yet. I'll save that for another video. I have not read the manual um, in, or at least not in quite a few years. So I am not going to bother with experimentation. But yeah, once you get your sound, what I'm going to do is go to LFO, go to my destination, and I want to target the morph amount one. I'm going to turn on my LFO. I can hear more movement now. That's better. I'm going to put that one on LFO2. I'm going to target more part two. I think I'm going to try to sync this one and use the, I'm going to try to square away. Shame on me. I forgot. Got to go back here. work that's a lot more tolerable now I want to go back here that's pretty neat I'm gonna put my LFO 2 to the multi 
There you go. And now I can hear a lot. I can hear more of the harmonics or yeah, more harmonics being moved and what does what. That sounds like an alarm clock that I would hate to wake up to. All right, so let's check the filter section. You have your standard low pass, high pass, band pass, notch at different decibels. I'm assuming the LPR stands for resonance, but I'm not certain. That would just be my guess. Notch with notch resonance, peak so forth i'm going to try filter four and see what it does and i gotta make sure when you're setting your sounds up to filter you could have it so that one one generator goes to each of the filters or you could have them both go through both filters i'm just going to mess with one for right now That's pretty neat. You can have the filter go through, pardon me, a second target morph, which. I don't know if I like that, but I'm going to continue with it for the sake of this video. interesting sounding filter I like that better it, it creates more movement and doesn't sound so much like an alarm clock so yeah I'm still on generator one spectrum modulators playing with the filters and now I'm going to go back to the unison because now I want to make that sound a little bit thicker. doing anything fancy maybe I'll turn the second generator off no I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna leave it off so yeah that's the basic of this sound this is a very non preferred sound but <clears throat> that's okay If you go here, you have the ability 
to adjust the harmonics. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Interesting. I really have to take the time to play with this. Let's go back. But anyhow, you can access different parts of the spectrum, parts of the modulator. You have your maps. You can adjust the filter. You have a sequence. And analyzer. This is for... Nope. Oh. Start the process to select the input source for the audio. Generator one, generator two, sample or draw. Yes, you can sample. If you hit this button right here, you can sample directly into the device. Remember, if you are using this in as a VST, you, you can't do it. So you can only use it in standalone. And let's see, the XY. I do not know what the XY setup is for, so I apologize for that. I got some basic movement. I'm going to go back home. How much time have I got? PM. All right, I'm not going to be here all day because I don't want to hold people up. I do want to see if I can go back to the envelope this is your attack envelope let's go back here got to be the most daunting for the listener who <laughs> got to be like why is he holding that button down i apologize it is just out of habit usually when i'm doing a sound or i'm making a sound i tend to it's a lot of listening <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out how to adjust that accordingly. This looks like it is the amplitude envelope, but I am not I am not as easily able to adjust the sound to my liking. In most amplitude envelopes, I can you know simply take a sound. I know I'm loading it up using more time. Come on. You can do it. There we go. You know, usually I can drive that up and you'll just hear that delay. If I want to increase the tail. I'm not able to do that as easy or as easily in this device. to you know make a, a sound that will easily distinguish like a pluck sound versus a pad and everything else in between so i'll have to do a little bit of digging anyhow i'm gonna finish this out <laughs> By going to my effects, one, two. 
one sixteenth to an eighth. Keep playing that. One cool thing, most people probably already know this by now, but if you don't, one nice thing about the the echo delay effect is if you want that old school tape distortion sound, you just start messing with your envelope. and the wobble. <laughs> that sounds terrible again, I gotta stop that. That was a little too much. I can go back here. Yeah, so nothing too fancy. That sounds terrible. Don't go along that one. I could probably use that for something. I could also hear an arpeggiation in there and really draw it out if I was to turn this into a combinator and layer it with a plucked instrument. But I'm not going to do that. Yeah, not for this video. You get the point. Even a, a synthesizer like this, if you put the time into it, you can get you know, different sounds out of it. And this is, you know, not my first crack at it, but this is probably more like my third or fourth. But the sound is not terrible. And I can definitely use it as a, a standard pad or, you know, as a backing patch and add some movement to it in a different type of song. So yeah, <clears throat> you put a gated filter on it and you know, again, it will add a different texture to the tone. So that's about it for this device. Again, it's free. And yeah, if you're a Reason user and you're limited on sounds and you want something to experiment with and an easy way to expand your sound palette, I definitely recommend checking this out and using it. If I didn't utilize this to your liking, hey, it is what it is. Like I said in the first part of the video, I'm not an expert, but you know, using a device like this and at least making the attempt to divulge into these synthesizers, you'll find that you can get a lot of mileage out of your VSTs or your rack extensions. In this case, if you you know, take the time to experiment and, you know, see what does what. So, yeah, that's all I got for today. It's Tim Keys, and I'm signing off. Peace out.